Do you have a favorite combine story? You're going to get it too, Phil. So you got to think. Not one I'd give on air. <laughs> Why not? Come no, on. No. It always, this is cable. It always, it always involves that ride home. <laughs> Well, that's a tough one. I don't know that. To see how the Combine's developed, and it's it's almost become Disneyland yeah. to a certain extent. I mean, it's such a big deal. Corporate now. Right. Kind of remember back like 78, 79, when it first started, it was physicals only, you know, and some of the players involved. And then Les Miller said, you know, I'm going to start taking Polaroids of these people. So he would have a visual that kind of could, could connect that to the physical, and they say, hey, that's a great idea. And all of a sudden, Teams got involved in taking the front pictures, the back pictures, you know, and all this stuff. So it's evolved. Back then it was so minuscule because every team only had three or four scouts, four or five scouts, smaller coaching staff, smaller medical staff. Now the numbers have just escalated dramatically. One story, and this is kind of an offshoot of the combine, but when juniors really started coming out, a gentleman by the name of Reggie Cobb, who's one of us now, he's a scout. And he didn't go to the Combine, but we had to get, you know, running back at Tennessee. So I went to Tennessee to work him out at the uh, old Holiday Inn World's Fair, which I think is a Marriott now. But coming down cats and dogs, no indoor facility, can't. I've got three more people to do down, and some of them involve flying. So I go, Reggie, we're gonna have to run in the hotel. We're gonna have to do it down the hallway. I remember her being so nervous because what if a lady comes out and she's got her curlers and she's going to get her coffee? Lawsuit for Ruskell. But we did it. I know this hotel you well. You know it, we get yeah, down well. the hallway, which is about 60 yards, so he didn't have a lot of room. I was gonna say, did he have a parachute style. on to yeah. stop? He yeah. never had a better time. Yeah. He always thanks me for that. But it's all about adapting, you know, what you have to do. We've all have stories of where we worked guys out and it might have been midnight. That's why you love the combine so much because they all work out, same condition, same place. You've got a time that you know is offset against every other player. When they don't come here, and you gotta go start doing them on the road different stories evolve. Oh, I can remember timing Mark Astineau um, at East Central Oklahoma and squeegeeing off a track to get the snow off and setting my briefcase down because you had to make sure they didn't cheat up on you. And I said, Mark, you want to uh, warm up? He said, no, I'm good. And this gets down, runs a 4.62 or 4.6, whatever it was. I'm good. And go lift. And, you know, those kind of guys, you just kind of go, oh, that's pretty special stuff. Yeah. Have you had to squeegee a track yet, Brandon? No, nothing like that. <laughs> I, have, I have no stories related to that. But I, I think that just, you know, speaks to the job and just speaks to just having to adjust and adapt to every single condition known to man, whether it's, you know, showing up for a pro day at a small school and you're expecting 10 guys and, you know, 45 are there and, you know, you got to sift through that list. Or, again, you got to take a guy inside of a track or, you know, run diagonally across a uh, gymnasium floor or something Not like that. Door. You know, I mean, it just, I think it just speaks to the job. And it's part of it is, is fun. I mean, those are stories that you can always share. But, you know, I've had a few of those, nothing to their degree, but uh, a few of those where you guys have had to run diagonal or guys have had to run on different surfaces or uh, in different conditions.